Okay, then welcome back. So we are starting with the new topics uh, today with magnetism. And magnetism is a little bit weird. In some sense, you guys have more familiarity with the magnet. magnet. As in, you know, most of you kind of remember playing with the fridge magnet and, you know, it doesn't, well, so, you know, it doesn't surprise you that um, um, to start out with, how many people know what this is? What does it look like? It kind of looks like propeller, it's a compass, as in, <laughs> right? And it doesn't surprise anyone when I push it a little bit and let go, that it kind of comes back to where it was, right? Um, so uh, can someone say what the what compass is for? It allows you to know the direction of the poles up on the Earth. Yeah. It allows you to travel through. Direction of poles. So people use for navigation for thousands of years. Um, anybody here know which direction is north in this room, by chance? No. That way? Okay, so this must be the North Pole. <laughs> and no, north is south. What? Let's see. I'm trying to imagine the map. So Science Annex is here. The campus is to the west of Science Annex, right? So north. OK, so the blue end must be north. And you know, it doesn't surprise anyone that when you see this thing suddenly moving around, you don't think I'm you know, performing magic tricks or anything. Um, so you know, magnetism, in some sense, you are already familiar with it. And you know, when I take this bar magnet, which already has north and south label, so we figured the blue end must be north. And it yeah, repels from north, attracts to south, or south and repels from south. All of this sounds fam seems familiar to you, right? So um, I say magnetism is weird because, uh, so let me, by the way, pass this around. Um, I'm going to pass one more thing around, but figure it. Why do I get to, well, I, sorry, I don't know what else you would do with it. Here, let me send around another magnet with it. Here's the new DMU magnet to go with it so that you have something to do with it. I don't know. So, you know, in some sense, you're already familiar with all this stuff already. Um, and this picture is something that uh, illustrates something that many of you have probably seen. So let me bring up the camera, oops, here. So what this uh, overhead camera is showing right now is just, um, so these are just the array of tiny compasses that you have seen. And when I bring this uh, bar magnet around, what you're able to see is that the bar magnet affects the direction of these tiny compasses as I move it around. And if I put this in the center, does the, this picture look familiar? Like you have seen before? Yeah, you have, uh, many of you have seen this even before we did any electricity. And you know, it kind of resembles the electric dipole field, but um, as we mentioned when we were doing electric dipole, you have kind of seen this before, right? So, um, yeah, so, you know, in, in this sense, a lot, of, uh, um, a lot of the introductory material for magnetism, it's something that you have seen before, just by nature of um, having gone through education in the 20th or 21st century. <laughs> and, um, it, you know, none of this is new. And let me just do one last thing. This is one of the demos I found in the closet, and it's kind of a cool demo. I'll pass this one around. This is the cool one that, um, I mean, it's something that you can imagine, but you maybe not have seen. Um, so this illustrates electric uh, or magnetic field in two dimensions. It kind of looks like electric field you have seen before. This can be used to illustrate magnetic field in three dimensions, because it's a solid three-dimensional object. I can try to show it to you on the overhead thing, but it's not as impressive there as to sing it yourself. So first you have to shake it to distribute the iron filing um, evenly around. Once it's down there, oops. Oh. Then um, what I have to do is before they settle under gravity, I have to kind of put this in the middle. And you can maybe see, I don't know, this is why I thought it would have. Can you kind of see the iron filings uh, gathering into uh, the dipole field pattern? And because this is 3D, if you kind of turn it around, then you can see um, what the 
a magnetic field that looks like in three-dimensional shape. So let me pass this around. Um, the way I recommend that you do it is you know, first to shake it. Um, you have to evenly distribute the iron filing. It'll settle into the you know, pictures that don't look as good. And then you know, put in this magnet in here and see sort of the kind of shape that forms. So it's a fun demo. I have it, so <laughs> um, might as well make some use out of it. Um, so you know, all of this you have seen before. Nothing here is all that surprising. So uh, let's uh, start out with some um, de definition of terms that um, that you know we are going to be using. So. We should, um, we should <laughs> define them so that I can make sure everyone knows what I'm talking about when I do that. It didn't break anything, right? It's just a needle. It'll come off. And on. So let me just uh, write down some magnetism terms. So the, I guess the term I want to start out with is uh, magnetic field. And if, when I mention magnetic field, if you are thinking of electric field that we have talked about before, it'll be a good place to start. So for now, I don't really want to define magnetic field quite yet. We'll get to it. But for now, for your intuitive field, I want to say it's similar to electric field. So let's just start out with just the magnet. If you are talking about, if you are talking about you know, that this magnetic field, interact with magnet. When I talk about magnets, what do you imagine in your head? Like, wait, where's my bar magnet? Oh, OK. The bar magnet that KD is holding, is that more or less what you imagine when I talk about magnets? Right? So when you have a magnet, it has, um, so it has two poles. It has north pole and south pole. So it has these two poles. And I guess there's a reason we call them poles instead of, um, you know, instead of using the same word we used in electricity. In electricity, you know, we would have, so let me draw the, the analogous version in electricity. In, when we were dealing with electricity, we had electric dipole, right? And when we had electric dipole, we had a positive charge and negative charge at the uh, you know, two ends. And in a dipole configuration, we would talk about how far they are separated. And this whole thing combined as a whole would be an electric dipole. But except when we are you know, referring to this particular combination, we would call this object electric charge. So um, the question is, you know, why do we use a different word for this? Why do we simply not say it's a north charge and south charge? Like, how is mag in other words, uh, how is magnetism different from um, electricity in one key way? This is something I hope you already know. I mean, just to, I mean, I'm just trying to highlight it. But magnetism is different from electricity in one key way. South pole attracts the north pole. Okay. Now, here's something you might have seen as a child playing with a magnet. So this magnet is actually broken. I keep trying to hold it as one piece, but it is broken. When you break the magnet, now, I, so I have a north pole, and I want to use this north pole to um, um, attract or repel the north pole there. And when I try that, this is what I get. It actually attracts. What happened? I mean, I'm holding the north pole, but why is north pole attracting the north pole instead of repelling it? Yeah, this end is still the north pole, and the bottom is actually now a south pole. So I, if, you know, if I make sure to bring the top end closer, then that will repel the north pole. But if I turn it around and bring the other end, this is actually south pole now. Like everyone knows this, right? This, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. 
yeah, I won't ask because I don't, I'm not trying to embarrass people. But if you didn't know, then you should know that um, when you, so, you know, there's something funny going on with the magnets that wasn't with the electric dipole. So with the magnets, if you imagine breaking love into two pieces, then there's north and south, and north and south within the material. So, you know, I was asking why do, they, do we call them poles rather than charges? One of the reasons would be this is how you always see magnet. You never see North Pole by itself. You never see South Pole by itself. If you were ever to, you would actually call that monopole. And magnetic monopole is actually a pretty interesting topic of research. People have been looking for it for a long time. There were a couple like spurious or a couple signals that people could not re reproduce later. Um, so you know magnetic monopole is something interesting to look, um, look at if you're interested, but we are not really going to get into that. Um, for the purpose of this class, every time you see a magnet, it occurs always as a combination of north and south. So that's this is so this is uh, what we what we are used to referring to as a magnet is um, what we would call to be technically complete and correct what we would call magnetic uh, magnetic dipole and almost everything about magnetic dipole is similar to the electric dipole. The one difference is that in electric dipole, you could imagine separating that. You could take, imagine taking positive charge, and that's it. You turn the electric dipole into electric monopole. Like That's nothing unusual. But with the magnetic dipole, you cannot do that. If you try to separate, this will just become dipole on its own. So we are going to start by saying these magnets, they're not fundamental because sort of, you know, it's macroscopic object. And so, so this is not the fundamental object. And if we try to get down to this level, you know, field interacting with the charge to produce a force, um, well, we don't have magnetic charge. So this is a very puzzling thing. And um, unless you hear, someone here happens to know the answer, what's the elementary object in nature that does interact with the magnetic field? Yes, no. So I will um, reenact one of the experiments that were done in the, I guess, uh, early 19th century. It's a, uh, uh, I have to imagine it was an accidental discovery. Actually, the accidental discovery, it happened the other way. People were observing the interaction with magnets, with this other thing, but I, I don't really have the tools to demonstrate that. So I'm going to uh, demonstrate the flip side of that interaction, where you have a strong magnet already, and some, some, um, inter some thing that you can describe as, in terms of some fundamental object, elementary object, interacts with this magnet. So right now, I have this magnet here, and um, let me move this camera so that you can see it better. Um, um, this is the, some setup I have uh, with the wires and whatnot. So when I move this magnet around, you don't see any interaction with this wire, right? And does that sound like that's what you would expect? Yes? Yeah, wires made out of copper. Um, key thing is that it's not ferromagnetic. I forget if it's diamagnetic or paramagnetic, but whatever it is, it's a very weak interaction. That's why you are not seeing any force. When I move this, you don't really see any interaction here. Now, so that's a true of copper wire and just a magnet. But what happens is, let me turn on this power supply. Um, can everyone read that it's uh, um, outputting zero current, right? So what I have here is I have wire, the black wire here connected to the negative terminal. And I have this red wire connected to the positive terminal and um, I have this end open so that I can briefly touch it to uh, let current flow. So let's see what happens. Oh, maybe I moved the wire. Mm. Oh, that's why I taped it down here. I wanted to make sure that I don't accidentally move the wire. Let me just uh, tape it down one more time to make sure that when I'm touching that end, you have some reasonable assurance that that's not what's moving the wire. So, all right, tape it down one more time. 
So you know, even though I'm moving this, okay, that shouldn't move the other end. All right. Now, let me touch this end. So I guess you can you can't really see it in the camera, but when you look at the screen, you will see this portion of the wire suddenly move. Then that matches with when the current starts to flow. Like you know, that number it goes from zero to three. That's sort of the maximum current my power supply can provide. So when it has zero current, nothing happens. When the current starts to flow, then the wire suddenly moves. And what's more fun is I can change the direction. So, so let me take this magnet and turn it around. So oh, I don't know which end is North Pole. Probably should have figured that out. Does it? Is it moving in the same direction it did the last time? No, it's moving the other way, right? So, um, so, so, any guesses? Um, how would you describe the elementary object in nature that interacts with this magnetic field that's coming out of this uh, magnet? Electrons. Electrons. The electric charges are somehow interacting with this magnet. Now, it doesn't interact all the time, as you can see. Right now, it's not interacting. It's not doing anything. It interacts only under certain circumstances. 